Hey Sparkle Squad, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jasmine and welcome to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to do a single axle in figure skating. And this video is really requested, so I hope this video is going to be helpful for you guys and it's going to help you guys get your single axle. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright guys, before starting on working on your single axle, some of the required jumps that you're going to need to have are all of your singles, so that means waltz jump, sow cow, toe loop, loop flip, and lutz before you get started working on your axle. And another really good combo that is going to help a lot when you're working on your axle is a waltz jump loop combo. So I'm going to show you guys what that one looks like, but it's basically just a combination of both the jumps and it's going to help you guys feel the extra rotation and staying in after you land your waltz jump and it's going to help a lot when getting your axle. So I totally recommend having that combination so a wall jump single loop and it's going to help a lot with your axle so I'm going to show you guys what that one looks like. Alright guys, so another thing that you're going to have to have before you start working on your axle is a nice solid back scratch and you want to be able to hold this back scratch position for a long time while you're spinning because when you're doing your axle, it's not just like all the other jumps, you have to actually cross your feet in the air, which is what makes it a lot harder and you're doing more rotations. So I, I definitely recommend having a nice solid back scratch in this position that you can hold for a while and I'm going to show you guys what it should look like because it's going to help you with a lot with that rotating position that you're going to need when you're doing your axle. Alright guys, so once you already have all of your other singles, you basically already know the basics of every single one of the jumps, which is going to make learning your axle a lot easier. So if you don't have all of your singles, you are definitely going to want to have all of those before you get started because all of them incorporate into basically an axle if you take aspects of each one of them. So that's what makes it super important to have all of the other jumps before you start learning your axle. So axle is one of the hardest jumps to learn and it's also the only jump that actually takes off going forwards and when you're first starting to learn your axle it's really important to start doing it from standstill so i would say find yourself a line and stand on that line and then that's going to help you focus on pushing yourself out and you want to make sure that you're not swinging into your circle just like this because then you're never going to get your axle it's going to take a long time and you're going to take some really like ugly and hurtful falls so I recommend finding a line that you're going to be working on. They have all these lines. You have the blue and the red lines. You have these lines at my rink and stuff like that. But there's lines everywhere on the ice. And if you don't, then you can take, and you can ask your coach to draw you a line on the ice or something. But make sure that you just have somewhere that you can basically visualize that you're going to stand on and that you're going to start your jump every single time. Starting it from standstill is the hardest, but you want to start it off from standstill with no speed at all because it's going to help you get your axle and it's going to help you really feel it before you start to add the speed. All right guys, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to stand on our line. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to do our wall jump loop combination from standstill. So we're going to be on the line right here. We're going to have our arms nice and set up. We're going to bring them behind us when we step into our wall jump. So we're going to have our arms behind us when we step into the wall jump. We're going to jump, wall jump, and loop jump right when we land. And we're going to do this from standstill because this is the basic of an axle. And you want to be able to do it from standstill. And it's going to help a lot with your axle. So we're going to go here. We're just going to push, wall jump, loop, just like that. And you want to hold your landing position because you want to make sure that you have a nice solid landing position and it's nice and strong for when you do your axle. When you're doing your wall jump loop, you don't want to go here. You don't want to do wall jump and then a whole circle before you go into your loop. You want to try and minimize that space that you have while you're holding the two jumps in between. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go here, we're going to do wall jump, and almost immediately we're going to go into our loop, just like that. And then when we're doing that, if you guys noticed when I was doing that, my feet basically crossed. So when I did it, when I normally do a wall jump, I go here, and my feet never cross on it. My feet stay open, and they're like in like a V shape when I'm in the air. So a normal wall jump goes like this because our feet has to go behind us. When I'm doing the combination, I land with my foot in, like, for in front of me crossed because I have to go up into my loop jump. So 
what I'm gonna do here is when I'm doing my wall jump, I actually turn my foot in. So I'm gonna actually show you guys what that looks like on the wall so you can see it. All right, guys. So I'm over at the wall right now. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working on that like torque or like hip switch changing position. So we're gonna actually go here. We're gonna go here. We're gonna come through with our foot and my toe is facing forwards. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn my foot in and as you can see that I'm kind of like turning my hip in and it's helping me turn in that foot. So my hip is turning and that's helping my foot turn in. And as you can see, my feet, my toes are kind of like this. They're in like a V shape and they're facing each other going into the axle. So what we're gonna do next is after this, we're here right here, our feet turn in and then they go behind us. So what we're actually doing is, I want you guys to really see my feet on this one. So we're gonna go here, through it turns 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 and then this foot that is not on the ice is going to tuck under so you for an axle you have to have your nice your feet nice and tight and nice and like strong together so we're gonna go here through turn down so this foot that I'm actually standing on is gonna be bent so if you guys look my feet are gonna be like this so this foot is bent this foot is straight and I'm standing like this in the air so again we're just going to work on this turn position because this is something that we haven't done before in jumps so that's what makes learning an axle super hard and it's also really hard to learn all, all the other axles double axle triple axle quad axle um, so we just want to make sure that we're, we're good at going here we're going to go through turn down and then after we have that down then what we're going to do is we're going to just push out into a landing position so we're going to go through turn down step landing position we're going to work on that until we're comfortable with it all right guys so now we're off the wall and i'm going to go back to what i was basically telling you guys about the wall jump loop so when we're here we're doing our wall jump we tuck under and we land with our feet already crossed so our legs are crossed like this and that's how we're going to actually go up into our loop get tighter and then land so i'm going to show you guys what that looks like so we go here do our wall jump we cross under and then on our loop we even get tighter and we just want to work on that until we're nice and comfortable with doing that combo from standstill and we can basically do it every single time and we have it nice and consistent because trust me that's going to help a lot with getting your axle. All right guys, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a waltz jump into a back scratch. So this is a lot different because you're not going to be jumping back up. What we're actually going to be doing is we're just going to do a waltz jump. We're going to be landing crossed and we're going to, we want to make sure that we can control that edge enough that we can go into a back scratch. So I'm going to show you guys what I mean real quick. So we're going to go here, waltz jump, hold, back scratch. The back scratch doesn't need to be for too long or it doesn't have to be too fast because again we're only doing single axle and it doesn't have to be super super long because again for a single axle we're only doing so for a single axle we're actually only doing one and a half rotations in the air because if you think about it you take off going forwards you rotate half a rotation and then you rotate another rotation and then you land so a single axle is only one and a half rotations in the air so that means that our back scratch doesn't need to be too tight too long too fast anything like that it just has to be a nice simple basic back scratch so that you can feel con that continuation of rotation after you land the waltz jump so that you can kind of program your mind to be like okay now i'm going to do more rotations than what i'm used to and it's going to feel different at first but trust me doing this exercise is going to help a lot because it's going to kind of like get your mind into like that kind of sense like okay i need to rotate more after i land this or after while i'm still in the air so we're just going to work on this so we're going to go waltz jump here back scratch and then obviously into a nice landing position and we're going to work on that until we're comfortable with it All right guys, so now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do something called a bell jump. So a bell jump is basically similar to an axle, but what we're gonna be doing here is we're actually gonna be landing forwards on two feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start off forwards, full rotation, and we're gonna land forwards on two feet on even, evenly again. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna stand on our line. We're gonna do this from stance. So we're gonna push here and land forwards. So. This is going to help a lot while we're doing our axle, and it's going to help us start to slowly get used to doing more rotation than what we're actually used to. So we're gonna push, 
here, jump, and land going forward, just like that on two feet. So you wanna make sure that you land with your feet nice and bent because you don't wanna land with straight, with straight legs and then you're just gonna face land. So you wanna make sure that you bend your feet when you land and we're going to be landing facing forwards, gliding on two feet, just like this in this position. Bell jumps really help, especially if you have like a fear of going into new jumps. And it's basically just going to eliminate that fear that you already have. And it's going to just slowly start to get your mind used to doing all these new rotations and doing more rotations than what you're used to. So we're just going to work on our bell jump until we get comfortable with it. All right, guys. So for an axle, there aren't actually that many things to do and to, unless just like going for it. So basically now, once we get comfortable with doing our bell jump, we have our combo, we have our Walsh and back scratch. We're just going to try going for an axle. And trust me, it's going to be scary at first because you're doing a whole extra rotation than that one rotation that we were just doing. But if you guys are able to easily add that half rotation to that previous half rotation, then you guys can add another half rotation to it. So. For an axle, I don't recommend landing on two feet when you're first trying to land when you're first trying to learn it because it's going to be really really hard. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go here and we're just going to go for our axle and we're going to try landing on one foot. So we're right here. We go into our axle. We're going to step. Our arms are actually going to be behind us. You want to make sure that the leg that you're standing on is nice and bent because the lower you can bend, obviously don't bend all the way down here because then you're not going to be able to jump. But the lower you can bend and the more you can get your leg to be down then the easier it is going to be to jump up higher for what you want to get your nice big height for your axle. And trust me, for axles, you want to have as much height as possible. So we're right here. We're standing on our line. We're going to push. We're going to step. And we're going to jump up into our axle. And we're going to go into that crossed position. So for axles, I know earlier I said that you want to make sure that you're jumping nice and straight and you don't want to jump around. So I know I did say that, but there is actually like a, me like a medium between those two. So obviously you don't want to swing your jump around like this because then you're never going to be able to do an axle. What you do want to do though is when I'm doing my axle, I'm coming a little bit closer so that you guys can see my hands. When you step into it, you're going to use this arm. You're kind of going to have your shoulders turned outwards. So. When you think about an axle, you don't step into it completely square and completely straight. You're going to be twisted to the side. So for me, since I'm a righty, I'm stepping on my left foot and I'm facing my right. So I have my left arm. It's still behind me, but it's kind of in front of me. So it's in front of my shoulder. So my, this shoulder in my left shoulder is in front of my right shoulder and I'm kind of twisted like this. So this way, we're going to go here and we're going to be gliding on an outside edge. We're going to kick through. Sorry, you guys can't see me. I completely turned the other way. So we're gonna go right here. We're gliding on our outside edge. We're gonna kick through and we're actually gonna bring this arm around. So if you see right here, this arm is behind me right now. But by the time that I jump, it's gonna be in, it's gonna be nice and square with the other arm. And that, just like that little quarter rotation of my shoulders is actually gonna help a lot with the rotation. So this arm is behind, through, and it's gonna go in. So our arms, are gonna be in whatever position you wanna do. You either can do um, cross like this, seat belt, you could do just regular cross. Whatever you wanna do, there's many different ways and I would recommend asking your coach which one they recommend for you because they're the ones that know what kinds of jump you do. So um, we're gonna go here, back, through, in, and out. So for my legs, again, I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So when I was on the wall and I was showing you guys this, we stepped and this foot is gonna come around. So it's gonna come around, and this is gonna help, it's gonna come around at the same time as my shoulder. So I'm here, around, and in. And that's actually gonna help me initiate that rotation, and it's gonna make, a lot of, it's gonna make it a lot easier when you're going for your axle. So, basically now that we know all of that, we just have to go for an axle. And you're gonna fall a lot, especially since it's a new jump. I would like to tell you guys, don't like expect to land at the very first time because there's people who struggle for many months, many years to get their single axle. So it's going to take a while and it's going to be a very long process. And axle is one of the jumps that takes the longest to learn. It's not just like a single where you can just do it. Um, so axle, you're going to struggle with it for a while, but don't give up. You have to keep on working on it. And I would just recommend doing it from standstill and just keep pushing it because one day you're just gonna have everything is going to click in your mind and it's going to make it so much easier to do it. So now we're gonna show you guys what my axle looks like.
Alright guys, so once we have our axle from Stansel, we're going to slowly start to add some speed to it. And this is when I go in some increments, and I'm going to show you guys what kind of like entries that I prefer. So one of them that you can do is you can do backward crossovers, inside edge, switch to an outside edge, and then just go for it. Another one that you can do is you can do backward crossovers going the opposite direction, and you're just going to hold a nice long outside edge just like this, and you're going to go into your axle. And those are the two that I mainly see, but there's many different ones that you can try. You can make it creative, do a bunch of different turns, whatever you want to do into it, and you can really personalize it and make it however you want, however you feel comfortable doing it. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys what your axle should look like after you slowly start to add speed. You don't want to expect it to be super fast and flying across the ice at first because even once you slowly start to add speed to it, since you got so used to doing it from standstill, it's going to be a little bit harder to adjust, but eventually you will get it. So trust me, just keep working on it and you will get your axle. So we're just going to slowly start to add speed to it and I'm going to show you guys what my axle looks like when I do it with speed. Alright guys, so this is the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed and that it helped you guys get your axle or if you already had your axle, it gave you some tips and tricks on how to make it better. And I just really hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If you have any other recommendations of videos that I should do tutorials on or elements that I should do tutorials on, leave those in the comments below and I would be happy to make it for you guys. So I will see you guys in my next video. Love you guys. Bye.